All right, hello everybody and welcome back. I'm going to show through today as the title of the video states how I have set up a sort of simplish gear template. And so this allows me to make a lot of different gears with various sizes in a pretty short time. And I'm just gonna walk you through what I'm using right now as far as the template goes. And hopefully that's uh, enough for you to build your own template. I We'll also have this file available for download in the with a link in the description if you want to look at it or just use it yourself. And so let's get right in. First, with a blank file, I'm going to show the equations that I'm running for this. So we have uh, various variables put in here, and I'll just go over them. So we have our shaft diameter, and that's going to be a the central hole and the gear. And we have the outside diameter and the pitch diameter, which are taken from some of the equations that are actually part of all the values that are here. So we have the outside diameter being that pitch plus uh, two times the addendum. And so all these values are just, these equations are taken from machinery's handbook as far as what the value should be for calculating all the different parts of a gear. Next, we have our pitch diameter, then we have our teeth. So this is another one of the ones that you would input is the number of teeth on your gear. Then we have the root diameter, which is another one that is just done by an equation. And then we have our gear width. So that's however thick the gear is that you're gonna be running with. And the pitch. So the pitch here is in inches, just the actual just the pitch value that you look up from the from a table. Like for this one, I looked up the diametral pitch for a for a twelve, and this was the pitch value that I was given for that. Then we have our addendum, which is another calculated one, and then we have key width and height. A lot of the gears that I make have uh, a keyed shaft, and so I actually have this in here so that if you want to run a keyed shaft. It already calculates what that cut should be and includes it in there, but it's really easy to just remove, to just uh, not enable the key cut in the model file. And that'll allow you to have the shaft without a key and if needed. And then we have our dedendum, which I found with how I'm currently running this isn't actually used. So I currently have just a default value in there. It uh, there's some ways to calculate it properly, but I found that it wasn't actually making much of an effect on the design overall. So I'm just not using it. Then we have the angle. So your pressure angle for the gear, which I'm running a 20 on this. And then we have the diametral pitch clearance and the B value, which I forget what it, what that's a reference to. But all of these are also calculated values. So there's our equations. Let's get into the actual sketches. First, we're going to look at the extrude sketch. So the extrude, what we're going to be doing is we're just creating a couple, a couple circles here that are centered on the origin with the outside diameter. And here, if it'll show it. So we have our outside diameter here. And then we have our shaft diameter for the inside. And then all we've done there is we've taken the extrude and the extrude is actually using the gear width variable. So that ends us with sort of a blank for the gear. That's the correct size. And that's if you're going to say cut the gear yourself, you would want to start with this as your sort of starting point, you know, with allowances on the outsides if needed. Then we're going into our actual gear cut. So this will cut all the gear teeth in there. And this is where the sketch gets a little bit more involved. So we have a tooth profile measured in here. And we have a couple inferences. Let's uh, turn on some sketch relations there so you can see what is in relation to each other. We have the uh, diameter here. We have 
this, which is our, which is going to be the angle based off of the number of teeth. Actually, I put it up here. So you see there we have just the number of actual teeth based off of 360 degrees to give us that first tooth angle. We have up here, which is that pressure angle. And we have here, which if it will pull it up, is the addendum, which is our just our central pitch up to there. And I think that's actually all the driven values that are in this specifically, other than we have down here is after I've put in the after you put in the re repetition for the, the for the rotational pattern, what is it, circular pattern? Forget what do they name it in this. But anyway, so after you have the circle circular pattern, you can define that you want a dimension for that, but you have to complete that first and then edit the dimension to add in a relation to one of your variable variables. It won't actually allow you to put in the variable into the field, or at least in my version of SOLIDWORKS, it wouldn't. So I added that in and then added it so that this was a variable for our number of teeth. But that just cut repeats the cut around. And that's, that's really all that was included in the sketch. So there were some variables that are already ac accounted for and most of the uh, most of the variables in our equation tab are just used to calculate what these few driven values are supposed to be. And we'll go out of there. And this is just a simple cut to the other side. So we're just cutting through all with that to cut our profile. Out. Now, if you want to do it, you also have the key cut and the values that we're using here is that we're using that height from the that's actually from the diameter up to the bottom of that key cut and then just the overall width of our key cut so it's a really simple one for that it's easy to measure out calculate what you would need for based off of what your shaft is and all that all right, so that's the basic gear here. And you see we have our shaft, we have our key cut, we have all of the teeth, and it's really rather simple. If you need to go in here and say that it's the same pitch, but you need a 20 tooth gear, you modify that. And there you have a 20 tooth gear with the same shaft, but uh, same pitch and everything is calculated properly. Or we go in here and you wanna say you have a 27 tooth gear on a half inch shaft and you only have a 0.1825 gear width and there we have our extra gear so that seems all all well you know you can make a gear out of this and you can copy this around but the last part that will make this really easy is we go, we're going to go up here, we're going to go File, we're going to go Save As, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to Save Type, and we want to select a Part Template. That's the PRT dot. And this will actually switch automatically to your Templates folder. And what you're going to do is, I, as you see here, I have actually saved it as a gear pattern. So we have a gear pattern set, and we're going to, you would save that as these this uh part dot file and it will create a template now what that does is if we go i'm going to close this out for now i'm going to open a new and normally you're going to see this as a uh, default for your for uh, starting a new part or assembly file you just want to click advanced and it'll actually show you your additional templates and from there, you can see that I have the gear pattern template. I can pull it up and it starts it as a new part with the original setup that I had. Now, if you save your template with your most common pitch, you will be able to just create a lot of that, a lot of gears that are at same pitch with just slight variation in tooth or shaft diameter or width without actually having to change a whole lot in it. And then you could just save those all as your separate parts and 
makes everything easier for this and really that's all that's uh to it so i'm gonna upload that that file that i have on there and give it as a sort of template that other people can use if they want and that should be uh really helpful for people if they uh if you need to make a lot of gears and if you want to build similar types of templates it's just follow that same sort of process as you design what you want. You're going to put in the equations that you need to calculate that and then build all of your all of your uh, extrusions, all of your cuts, all of your sketches. You make sure they're fully dimensioned using those equations and you'll be able to have semi automated construction for parts. Yeah. And one last thing with this part, with this uh, file is a lot of the gear teeth that I need had lead in on one edge. So when you push two gears together, it would make it easier to mesh. And that is actually what I have set up here in configurations. So in the configurations, I have shafts with no key and shafts that are keyed. And then I have ones that have a lead in on one or both edges. So if I click one edge here, you can see it's rounded the edge. And if I click both, then you can see it's rounded both edges. And so that way you have a gear that slides on a shaft and needs to interface with different gears can move a lot easier and kind of roll in and locate better against them. So that's all I have for today. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope this was very inf informational for you guys and have a nice day.